Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. On the DAP Tools website, it describes itself as command line tools and smart contract libraries for Ethereum smart contract development. Let's go ahead and dive in by clicking on the installation instructions. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is install Nix, which is kind of a package manager. Uh, you can do this for both Mac OS and Linux. I'm not sure about Windows unless you have uh, WSL installed, um, which I do. Um, I've already gone ahead and copied this command and this command and installed Nix. The next thing you're going to want to do is copy this command, which basically downloads DAP tools and installs the individual tools that are part of the framework, and then you can actually get started. Now let's actually use DAP tools by creating a smart contract and running a few tests. So in my terminal, I'm going to create a directory. I'm just going to call it my contract, cd into my contract. and then run dap init. This will go ahead and create all of the files you're going to need. So it's going to create a mycontract.sol and a mycontract.t.sol. And one thing you'll notice about dap tools as opposed to frameworks like Truffle or Hardhat, which allow you to write tests in JavaScript, dap tools keeps it super simple by making you write your test in the same language that you're writing your contracts in, Solidity. So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio Code and see what that looks like. So it's gone ahead and created a bunch of files for you. Um, I'll talk about these files maybe in another video when we go into more details, but the important stuff is going to be in source. So you've got your contract and you've got your test. So here we've got a bare bones contract with no methods. And here we've got a test um, with some basic pass-fail tests that um, don't really tell you anything about the contract. But it actually gives you an idea of how you're going to set up your tests. So here you can see there's a setup method, and all the setup method does is instantiate a, your contract, and then this allows you to use that contract in your tests. So let's go to my contract, and the first thing we're going to want to do is create a method that we can test. And I'm basically going to copy from the tutorial on the DAP Tools GitHub. Uh, we're going to create a contract that receives some ether and then allows you to withdraw that ether with the correct password. So first, let's create a receive function. And then next, let's create a withdraw function. And this function will take in a password, which is a uint, and that password is 42. If you don't enter the number 42, access is denied and the contract will revert. So let's save that, and now let's create a test for it. Let's get rid of these, and let's first create a test that will check whether or not entering 42 will allow you to withdraw the Ethereum. So we have our first test, and to kind of explain what is happening in this test, think of the test itself. Um, it's actually a contract um, we are inheriting from this DS test. A uh, contract which has a bunch of useful uh, functions for testing, such as this assert equals function right here. And basically, you think about this Solidity contract test as a, an entity or person um, using the, the contract that we are actually testing. So in this case, my contract, um, the test contract is a person that is going to be interacting with my contract. So from this test contract, we send one ether. Um, we check the balance of our test contract um, after sending this ether, which should be uh, whatever the balance was minus one ether. Uh, then we call my contract with the withdrawal function, enter the number 42, which is our password. And then we check our balance again, and that balance should be equal to the balance before calling withdraw plus one ether. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's clear our terminal and run dap test. As you can see, our test actually failed. 
because our test actually needs to receive some ether in order to send ether to the contract we're testing. So we need to add a receive function to our test contract. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now with that receive function, let's go ahead and test it again. And now the test is passed. One useful thing you'll see about running DAP tools test is it'll actually show you how much gas is being used. So you can go ahead and try and optimize your contracts um, using this information um, or doing whatever else you need to do um, depending on um, gas. So let's create one more test and this test is going to make sure that nobody can withdraw the ether without entering the correct password. So this method is almost exactly like the first test method, but instead we are entering a password of one, which should fail because it's not 42. So let's go ahead and save this and run the test. And as you can see, the test passed because the withdrawal failed. And that's it. That's how you get started writing and testing smart contracts with DAP tools. In a future video, I'm going to cover some of the more interesting features of DAP tools including how to create more powerful tests using property-based testing, symbolic testing, and invariant testing. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.